Today our topic is arithmetic and geometric sequences. So our essential question, how can I find and write an equation for an arithmetic or geometric sequence? All right, so first we're going to talk about arithmetic sequences. A sequence is an ordered list of numbers. So they're ordered, and we can call those numbers terms. So if we look down here, our terms would be 2, 5, 8, 11, 14, and 17. And then this dot, dot, dot just means it keeps going following that pattern, okay? Arithmetic sequence is the difference between the terms is constant. And constant means the same. So you're changing by the same number. And for arithmetic, you're either adding or subtracting to get the next term. So here, we're adding 3. 2 plus 3 is 5, 5 plus 3 is 8, 8 plus 3 is 11, 11 plus 3 is 14, 14 plus 3 is 17. We call that difference, that change between the numbers, the common difference. Now, even if we're not subtracting, it's still a common difference because it's that change between the terms, okay? So don't get confused because we call it a common difference. That's not just subtraction. That can still be addition. All right, so we're going to graph a sequence and see how it connects to our linear algebra. So for our example, we have the sequence, negative 5, negative 2, 1, 4, 7. It keeps going. So this would be term 1, term 2, term 3, term 4, term 5, and then so on. So in our graph, our x's are going to be our terms or our term number. So this would be the term number, and this would be the actual term, so the actual number. So term number 1 was negative 5, so with 1, we're going to put negative 5. 2 went with negative 2, 3 is 1, 4 is 4, and then 5 is 7. So that's how we line it up. All right, now let's look at that pattern. What are we changing by each time? Well, we are adding 3 to get to that next number. So now let's go backwards. What number could we add 3 to to get to negative 5? Well, that would be negative 8. That's what we need. We need that zero term because that's our y-intercept. All right, so let's answer these questions. Write an equation for the sequence. Find the common difference. Find that slope. Well, your common difference is 3. We were changing by 3 each time, so our slope is 3. Find the 0 term, your y-intercept. Well, we did that. That was negative 8. And then we're going to write the equation. So y equals mx plus b. So m goes first next to x, so y equals 3x plus b, so plus negative 8. Then to graph that, we would graph the points that we can. We have 1 and negative 5. We'll go right here, 2, negative 2, 3, 1, 4, 4, and we can't fit 5, 7 on the graph. So that would be a graph of our sequence. So arithmetic sequences are actually linear. We can write a linear equation. All right, so we're going to use the equation for the sequence. So our equation was y equals 3x plus negative 8. We want to use that to find the tenth term in the sequence. Now, if we want the tenth term, our term number was x. So we're saying x is equal to 10. What is y going to be? So we say y equals 3 times x, so times 10, plus negative 8. Well, what's 3 times 10? 30 plus negative 8. Well, that's really 30 minus 8, which would give us 22. So the tenth term in the sequence would be 22. Now, the reason we want to use this is because we don't want to have to sit there and add 3 every time. Our sequence was negative 5, negative 2, 1, 4, 7. So if we wanted the tenth term, that would have been too hard. We would just have to keep adding 3 each time, and eventually we would get to that tenth term. However,
in our next question, we want the 35th term. Do we want to add 3 35 more times? That's a lot of adding 3 when we have an equation that we can use that makes it a lot easier. So we have y equals 3x plus negative 8. We want that 35th term, so we're saying x equals 35. y equals 3 times x, so times 35, plus negative 8. y equals 3 times 35 is 105, plus negative 8, which is really 105 minus 8, so y equals 97. So our 35th term in our sequence is 97. All right, go ahead and flip your paper over, and now we're going to talk about geometric sequences, which are similar, but they have one tiny difference. Geometric sequence is the ratio between the two terms is constant. So now we're looking at a ratio instead of a difference, which means we're going to be using multiplication and division. Okay, the common ratio is the constant ratio between the two terms. So it's ever you're multiplying or dividing by. So here we have our terms, 2, 6, 18, 54, and 162. And that common ratio is times 3. To get from one term to the next, we're multiplying by 3. So a geometric sequence equation, we want to know which equation forms the geometric sequence. Now here, I have pictured what you're going to get on your MCA formula sheet. Now, arithmetic sequence is linear, so y equals mx plus b. However, a geometric sequence looks a little bit different. We call this an exponential equation. And the one key thing is that x is a power. So x is your exponent or your power. All right, so that's the key when we're looking at a geometric sequence. If x is a power, it's going to be a geometric sequence. So as we look, a, there's no power of x. We don't have this little x up here, so a is not an answer. If we look at b, b is linear, so this would actually be an arithmetic sequence, so b is not correct. c, if we look at c, x is a big number, and we have a little 2. We call this a quadratic. You're going to learn a lot about this in high school algebra. So this is a quadratic equation, which is not a geometric sequence. So if we finally get down here to D, we see we have a little baby x, which means this here is your equation that would form a geometric sequence. Finding the given term for the sequence. So we want to be able to find the next term. So we're going to find the next three terms in the sequence. So we have to find that pattern. We're going from negative 3 to negative 15. How could we do that? Uh, if we times by 5, we would get negative 15. Let's check. Is negative 15 times 5 negative 75? Yes, it is. And negative 75 times 5 is negative 375. So for each term... We're going to have to multiply the previous term by 5. So if we do negative 375 times 5, we get negative 1875. So that's our next term. Then we want to find the following one. So we're going to multiply that number by 5, and we're going to get negative 9375. And then we multiply that again by 5, and we get negative 46. 1875. So as you notice, these numbers get really big really fast. So we started at negative 3, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 terms later, we're at negative 46,875. So we got big really fast, okay? So that's what happens in geometric. You get bigger numbers faster, okay? So now, if we are given an equation, and this should be to the power of x, not a big x. So I'm going to rewrite this as y equals 2 times 3 to the power of x. 
What is the fourth term in the sequence? So if we're looking at term number, that's always your x. So we're saying x equals 4. What is that? So all we have to do is substitute an x. We have y equals 2 times 3 to the power of 4. We're replacing that x with 4. And now we're going to let our calculator do the work. We're going to plug this into our calculator. 2 times 3 to the power of 4 equals 162. So we can say equals 162. So our fourth term in the sequence would be 162. That's all the notes I have for you today. Thank you for watching this video and please subscribe to my YouTube channel.